Happy Bowtie Friday. I'm Austin Griffith. Today we're looking at Scaffold ETH and how we brought the graph in. So now it's a lot easier to display your front end uh, and parse events using the graph in Scaffold ETH. And I want to run through that real quick just as kind of a speed run too long didn't read on how to do that. So basically, uh, just a quick intro to Scaffold ETH. It's a DAP building toolkit kit. Basically, it's hard hat and react and a bunch of components and hooks that I put together to make it easier. And uh, the, the superpower is about being able to edit your contracts and your front end at the same time and kind of build things in parallel and you learn a lot from doing that. So here we go, let's get this thing going. So the first thing you do is clone down scaffold ETH. I've done that into your next step. Then you'll do a yarn install and that's gonna install all the packages. It'll take a little while. Then when you're ready, you can do a yarn start and that's gonna bring up your React front end. We'll get that at localhost 3000. Then we need a new terminal and we'll do a yarn chain. That's gonna fire up your hard hat node and also give you a bunch of accounts with money in them. We'll use those for the faucet. And finally, the third thing is a yarn deploy. So that's going to compile your contract. Scaffold ETH comes with a your contract. It's kind of like a placeholder contract. It'll compile that. It will deploy that to your hard hat node. Then it'll take the artifacts, the address and the ABI, and it'll inject that into the front end. So when we do a yarn deploy here, watch this contract right here. It's 5FBD and now it's something else. There we go. So we get a new contract every time. And if we are uh, editing our solidity, let's go look at our, uh, let's go look at it right here real quick. Here's our contract programming money oh, whoops I didn't mean to do that yarn deploy what we'll see is this value is going to change right we're we're going to get a new contract that's going to be deployed with a different purpose there we go okay cool so uh, this is basically the scaffold ETH setup you'll spend a lot of time kind of working on your contract here and then uh, editing your front end in the react app here uh, lots of lots of tasty hooks there help you out like get balance contract reader hooks ENS like a, a lot of stuff that you find yourself using in every uh, build there are these nice handy components here's here's one of my favorites you always need to take in an address when you're building an adapt right wouldn't it be nice if there was a nice uh, input field that did ENS resolution and did a blocky preview and even boop 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 it's a QR code scanner which 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 camera is it I don't even know but yeah that's a very common thing so with it just built into scaffold ETH and it helps you build prototypes and products quicker what we're looking at though is once I have this and I'm able to oh, oops we're gonna have to oh metamask come on no 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 let's lock out let's get out of there Let's use this burner. So you you when you land on Scaffold ETH, you get a burner wallet uh, right away. You can head to the faucet and give it some funds. Now I have enough for gas and I can say hello world on my contract. And there we go. We can start to uh, another one. We can kind of just set this purpose, right? Writing is very expensive. Reading is super cheap. We've got our purpose getting set. Uh, you can even use this example UI, right? This too. This will also talk to your contract. There's a lot of like UI examples, uh, but this is what we're looking at here. Basically, once you start building your front end, you'll find that you need to trigger events in your smart contract. Whatever happens, it, like think of think of it if your contract was a decentralized bank and you were running, wanting to read more than just someone's balance, right? Okay, fine, you know, Alice's balance is this, Bob's balance is this, but what if we want to show Alan's, Alice like a, her, her whole uh, like uh, withdraws and deposits, like the whole balance sheet and, and how you got to this balance, you would wanna trigger events on every deposit and withdraw and you'd wanna show those here. Well, after a while, uh, you, you end up having to parse the chain way back and these events take a long time. Like if I go to support.buildguild right now and I look at the activity, these are events. And look at that, look at them come streaming in, right? You can imagine if there were thousands of those, this front end would just fall apart and that's what happens. So what you need is a middleware layer, which is what the graph does, which brings basically kind of this Postgres database in the middle. It parses your events and then you can kind of like GraphQL like query that database. So it's just going to end up making your front end a lot easier and making your life a lot better when you have to query some complex thing. 
you're going to be able to just say, hey, you know, give me that thing that's referenced to that thing. You can make typical kind of classic database calls and it's a lot easier to uh, present and uh, digest data that way. Okay, so let's see. Now we have our basic typical scaffold ETH setup. Uh, we've got our app at localhost 3000. Uh, we've gone through the spiel. We've got our chain up. Now it's time to basically kind of make the change from uh, event parsing over to the subgraph. So there's this new subgraph tab. Once you have your app up, check out this, I guess it's that direction, check out the subgraph tab. <laughs> and, and it kind of gives you the same hint. Hey, you've been using use event listeners. Let's, let's do this a little differently. So uh, you're gonna need Docker. Uh, you can uh, probably install that with Brew or you can install it from their website. But basically Docker is like a containerization service. It helps, uh, it kind of like infrastructure, your infrastructure basically is in your code, which is really cool. Uh, but for us, it, it's gonna help us set up a whole Postgres database and I don't wanna F with that. No one wants to F with that. Here we go. Okay, so in case you have some data that's pre-existing in that, in, in your app directory, you wanna clear that out. That goes to that Docker folder uh, kind of up here. You'll notice a new Docker folder in Scaffold ETH. Uh, and also there's this new subgraph folder, which we'll tackle in a second. But so we cleaned out any old data and now we're going to yarn graph run node. Uh, shout out to Adam. He did uh, all this work. Thank you, Adam, for doing that. Uh, you uh, you saved us. <laughs> we probably wouldn't have this if Adam wouldn't have done that. So uh, thanks to him for putting this together. But what we're waiting for here is for our Docker node to spin up. And then once it spins up, we will, we're waiting for some, uh, oh, we're going to need a new terminal. Yep, 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 yep. We're waiting for, it's like, a, what is it? Something about web sockets or something. There it is, yeah. So now it's up. Then we grab the next command is create local. This will work and it will only work once. So if you're running it and it's failing and then you run it again and it works and then you run it again and it fails, you may miss the fact that it, that it worked, but pay attention, this will only run once and if you run it again, it's gonna fail. I mean, you can run it again, but it's just not gonna work. Okay, then the next thing, then, then finally you do this graph ship local. So let's take a look at our subgraph folder. In particular, there's a template for your subgraph. So uh, there's this template here that's gonna plug in whatever contract address, just like how Scaffold ETH likes to handle things for you when you do that deployment, it's going to grab your deployed contract address, put it in here, and generate the subgraph.yaml file. And I believe we can fire that off here. Yarn graph ship local. Yarn graph ship local. There we go. This new subgraph is generated. Cool. Awesome. So that template, uh, we'll, we'll dive in and look at that in a second. But there we go. Now we've deployed it. And I think actually, there we go. All right. We can actually start doing, uh, let's see, if we wanted to look. So what it's doing right now is it's just tracking these purposes that are getting set up using the set purpose that Scaffold ETH uses out of the box. Let's just say, what if we wanted like the most recent person that submitted a purpose, something like that, maybe? Yeah, there we go. There, there would be their address, right? And then, or, or maybe you wanted like the oldest one. You could probably do something like that. There we go. So this is like a little sandbox that lets you play around with making the, the correct GraphQL query. Once you have the query and you like the way it's looking, you can get into your app and, and basically build out your front end using this pre-populated object that's just way better than having to sit there and use a hook and parse events. So let's back up a little bit and look at what this YAML file does. In particular, you'll have these entities. And for, for these, you're going to need to set up this schema. So there's this schema here that tells you kind of like what entities you have and what data types they have within them. And you'll notice this is really cool. Look at this. So basically this uh, the sender's purposes. So for any given sender, we could check their purposes. Let's let's do that. Let's do that. So given this sender, I bet we can do, this is going to be really weird, but we're querying purposes for the first one, and then we're getting the sender of those. And now I bet I can do purposes here. Oh, well, except for that. And what does it do? Does it just, let's see. I think it tries to help me. Yeah. And then it's going to give me the ID or can I just do purpose? There we go, this is cool. So 
basically I got who is the person who has said it the most recently given their address can we look up all of their given purposes for some reason you, you can see here that you can put together some complex and exotic calls and get just the data you need and things are kind of like referenced there, there's a lot of this kind of magic here where where material that re or entities that reference each other are sort of kind of like automatically packed in here cool so you've got your template you've got your entities uh, those entities have the schema they can be referencing each other and then down here we set up our event handlers so given our contract let's go look at our contract real quick it triggers the set purpose event so given this set purpose event if we look back here we're gonna say we're gonna set up a handler so we want to handle the set purpose event and that handler is going to be in this other file here, this mapping file. And this is the most complicated file. It'll take you a little bit to grok. There's some weird stuff there. You, you have to remember to get this just right. But basically, you're going to import uh, those, those entities. You're going to import uh, the, the schema. And then we will basically trigger this handler. So this handle, this handle runs when each event happens so basically it's listening for events and it'll go back all the way through the chain and parse all the events but anytime it gets an event it's gonna run this code and we can see what it's we can kind of see what it's doing here basically it's it's going to get the uh, senders address here right and using that senders address we're gonna check to see if the sender already exists in the database we're gonna do a load if it's if it's null then we're just gonna kind of create a new sender and and set the uh, parts of the entity right there's a sender dot address and there's a sender dot purpose right we're gonna set those things here and Adam just as an example did purpose count plus one so it basically like increments this person's purpose count just showing that you that you could get in here and say purpose count and find out how many purposes uh, that per person has set. There we go, it's three. It, it, it showing you that it runs this each time and with each event parsed, even if this sender already exists, we're just gonna increment that. Uh, not, not sure if you would use that exactly like that, but just kind of like showing off how this is gonna work. Then uh, we, we save our purpose, we create a new purpose uh, entity and then at the very end we save those and there's a couple different forks on scaffold ETH there's a lot of good examples of how this works you'll want to kind of look at a couple other mappings because there's some weird intricacies here but basically you have the template that's gonna give you where your handlers are you set up your handlers and your handlers end up initiating these sort of uh, data types these entities once you have all that you you can basically do instead of doing this whole setup you can just do this yarn deploy and graph so let's say uh, let's go back to my contract now and let's just say our purpose is programming our starting purpose is programming for some reason instead of doing a yarn deploy and just shipping my contract I'm gonna do yarn deploy and graph and that is going to compile my contract it's gonna ship it off to the hard hat node. It's gonna take my artifacts and it's gonna inject them into the front end, but it's also gonna take my address and generate my subgraph YAML, and it's going to uh, populate the database and fire it up. So now everything is ready. We've got our new contract that's just programming for some reason. But now as we set, uh, uh, change things like purpose, like here, let's go change one thing. Let's go change, let's set it up. So in the mapping, instead of adding one, it adds two for some reason. So your first one gives you one and then every subsequent one adds two to this purpose count for some reason, I don't know why. And let's go ahead and ship that, right? And, and in this case, I don't need to redeploy my contract, but I'm assuming that you're kind of making contract changes and making graph changes and kind of like manipulating things all at once. In, in this case, I could have just run this, but we're gonna run the full uh, deploy and graph, and that's gonna give us a fresh copy. And then let's set the purpose one, two, Three. All right, so what should this dude's purpose count be, right? It should be five, right? Let's see. Let's see what my purpose count is. So given any sender, I want to look at their purpose count. There we go. Purpose count five. So this is just a quick and dirty speed run. Uh, you, you basically bring up classic scaffold ETH with yarn install, yarn chain, yarn deploy. 
But then uh, once that's up, there's this new subgraph tab and you can follow the in these instructions and it should pretty quickly get you up to speed with how the graph works. Uh, there's a link to the graph here. Uh, and then I guess once you're once you're done with this, once you've got it all working locally, then you, you will ship a subgraph or set up a subgraph on the graph site and, and deploy things to production. But this this should get you started with using the graph and scaffold ETH. Happy Bow Try Friday. Thanks for checking it out. Have a good one. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Check out Scaffold ETH in the graph.